हेलो गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन हेलो स्टूडेंट्स मैं एक अनाउंसमेंट के लिए आऊँ बिहाफ ऑफ इग्नाइट इंडिया एजुकेशन सो फ्रॉम टुडे वी आर गिविंग अ फ्री क्लासेस टू एवरीवन वन हु आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर नाटा 2021 एग्जामिनेशन दैट इज गोइंग टू बी हैपन ऑन ट्वेल्थ ऑफ जुलाई राइट स्टूडेंट ट्वेल्थ ऑफ जुलाई राइट इलेवेंथ ऑफ जुलाई टिल दैट टाइम वी विल गिव यू अ फ्री live session classes for that you need to contact on this number 9972046911 you can contact on this number you can whatsapp and you will get the free class till the, till your examination it is going to be free okay okay pooja ma'am you can continue the class okay sir okay is there any new student here yes ma'am okay so what we'll be doing is i'll be showing you guys a picture uh, which has many elements okay for 30 seconds then you have to observe the picture for that duration then the image will be removed okay then you have to write the elements suppose a tree i whatever it is okay you have to write the elements in order of their appearance okay understood Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's. I'll set the timer. Keep a pen and paper ready. Okay. Start. Okay, thirty seconds are up. I'll give you guys a minute to write down the elements. Yes, ma'am. Show you guys the image. Just check and see how many you guys got correct in order. One, two. Thirteen. Okay. Okay. Fourteen are there. So thirteen, fourteen, very good. Fifty got. Fifty got. This also got. Many of them actually, you know. Good. Okay, so uh, there are few ways of dealing with this. This one, okay. This type was actually asked in the paper. They may ask you to write down the number uh, elements in order, or they may ask you to uh, they may ask about a particular. <coughs> Thing. For example, in this case, they may ask you about uh, living creatures. Write the uh, names of living creatures. Puppy will come, flowers will come, uh, this pig will come, butterfly. Okay? They may ask a specific question like that, or they may ask to write in order. Okay? So why we are doing just in order is that when you know all the elements, it is easier to write which all are uh, a specific question is asked. You can easily write which they have specified. One thing. Second thing, the reason we are doing this is not just to improve your memory, but also to get for you to get used to this type of questions. If you see this question suddenly, 
you will be confused ki what to how to approach the problem okay that is the, actually the same thing for all type of person what you can do is you can merely observe the picture okay then write it or while observing you can write down in small you know short hand or uh, particular language for example puppy p u p can write pup okay ladder you may write like that okay so that you will not waste time but the problem with that is writing takes time okay so if you write what three four element can uh, ka naam till then 30 seconds will be over rest of them you may not have observed at all okay worst case scenario so always do an indentation on your paper okay specific thing that you know a draw diagram of it sometimes pencil and all you can write it small okay there are different ways of approaching this problem different ways for different people okay so you have to see put your effort during this put your effort during this questions on how to remember all the elements okay how many ever there are yeah the busy pictures na yeah understood i hope you guys understood what i'm yes. meaning to say in this one Okay. Next, I'll do uh, one more image. How many are there? Not many. You can do it. Not getting what you showed. Anusha, uh, do you mean the picture or? Anusha, can you hear me? Yeah, picture. Okay. I'm not able to see it. now okay okay we'll discuss that later okay now i'll show you another image okay same time 30 seconds what we should do as i said you can either observe the picture carefully okay some people can do it. just look at the image and recall it later that comes with practice uh, in the beginning at least try to give importance to all the images and their order while writing okay writing ke liye you will get time observing picture is what the time limit is for. so during that which uh, time in just observe properly okay uh, take your pen and paper be ready Okay, I'll give you guys a minute to write down the element. Then we we'll see. done okay you guys are done the little picture and the thing on the one that cut it 16 in order to be good yeah that's it this is the the card learn what did the last two second one for me hmm Last second, last second, this one. 
नेक्स्ट विल डू आर्किटेक्चर प्लान ओके तो यस्टरडे आई थिंक आई थिंक इट वॉज दीप्ति हू सेट विल डू मॉस्क आई थॉट टूडे ऑन दिल स्टार्ट ओके now the one which will be doing today is the blue mosque okay you must have seen it where is it anybody knows istanbul istanbul hmm? yes correct istanbul turkey okay it is almost i think opposite to hagia sophia okay Uh, it's called Sultan Ahmed Mosque also. Okay. Blue Mosque is because of its uh, this one looks. Okay. Architecture plan is Islam. Uh, sorry, architect style is Islamic and Ottoman. Okay. Sultan Ahmed Kami uh, in Turkey is they call it Kami. I think it must be mosque. Okay. It's in Istanbul, Turkey. It's a functioning mosque, meaning uh, there are prayers. Prayers go on there. Okay. It uh, attracts large number of tourist visitors. Okay, it was constructed between sixteen not nine and sixteen sixteen during the rule of Ahmed one. Okay, it's Kuliye again. I may be pronouncing it wrong. I I say Kuliye. Okay, what Kuliye means is it's a complex of buildings. It's a complex. Okay, contain. Ahmed Stone, the one who gave the commission, commissioned it to uh, be built, madrasa and hospice. What is madrasa? Anybody knows? Center madrasa. hall. Huh? No, it's an uh, institution. For Islamic, I'll say studies. Okay, madrasa means Islamic uh, study institution. Okay, and hospice. Hospice means it's a special hospital. it's a, a special hospital where people who are dying are taken care of okay hand painted blue tiles adorn the mosque's interior walls okay and at night blue lights okay uh, that's why it's called blue mosque no i send it today this is uh, i always send it after the class is done okay uh Mosque has five main domes, six minarets, and eight secondary domes. Okay, it sits next. Sorry, not opposite. Next to Hagia Sophia, the principal mosque of Istanbul until the Blue Mosque's construction and another popular tourist site. Hagia Sophia was constructed first, then uh, this Blue Mosque was constructed. Apparently, Sultan Ahmed the King who commissioned it uh, wanted it to be bigger than uh, Hagia Sophia. The Blue Mosque was included in the UNESCO World Heritage Site list in 1985. Yes, we'll discuss what are minarets and everything. Okay, this 
is the aerial view of uh, this one, blue mouse. Okay, so this is the front view. The architecture of it, uh, structurally speaking, it's very simple. I mean, not very exactly, quite simple. Okay. This is the courtyard in the front. You can see how this is the architecture plan of it. Okay, as you can see, this is the four court which you saw in the level first uh, second image. Okay, there's a fountain house. This part, this that is there. It's the fountain house. Okay. This is the mosque or the prayer hall. Okay. This is the entrance for tourists. This is the riva. We'll discuss, we'll see what is riva. Okay. Then this is the mira and mimbar. Okay. Minaret. Okay. Minaret is a tall, thin tower. Usually, it's a part of Islamic building, Islamic architecture building. Okay. These that you can see here, these are the minarets. Okay, can you see them? Six are Okay. These. We'll see the exterior interior of it. We'll just for now we'll see the uh, terms that we are seeing in the architecture. Okay. Mirab. Okay. Mirab is a niche in the wall of a mosque at the point nearest to Mecca. As you guys know, uh, when Muslims pray, they are facing the direction of Mecca, okay? nearest. So this is a niche. Niche means what? We've studied this. Position. Then decorative element, kind of a statue of somebody. Okay, the very near. Okay, they. This is like a. I can say it's a decorative element in the wall. Okay, it is constructed inside the wall where usually statues are kept. Niche itself is not a statue. Niche is a place where they are kept and it is usually inside the walls. It's not constructed outside. You will see. Yeah. Ma'am, the wall is arched inside, no? Yes. Where the statues are? Yes. Niche may not always be in arch shape. Okay, it can be a square also. I've seen squares also. We'll, we'll see what, what goes on. So, the most important element in the interior of the mosque is a mirror. Why? Because that is where they face and they pray, which is the main point of the mosque. Which is made of finely carved and sculptured marble with a stalactite niche and a double inscriptive panel, inscriptive panel above it. It is surrounded by many windows. The adjacent walls are sheathed in ceramic tile. This is for uh, Blue Mosque. Okay. Niche is this. Ma'am, huh? Ma Mirab is a wall. It's a niche. This blue part that you can see. It's a niche, okay? It's the uh, it is inside the wall. This is where they face and pray, okay? congregate. They usually have double inscriptive uh, panels like this. Okay? I think they are sayings. I don't know. Okay. Understood what this is? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. 
once again it is a niche in the wall okay it's a part of wall not the wall itself niche means it is a i can say sunken part okay it is uh, always constructed in the direction nearest direction of mecca okay where, where they face in which direction they face and they pray this is actually in uh, blue mosque near uh, mirab only okay not a general picture this is blue mosque mirab member so they it's not always called member it's so apparently minbar okay in not necessarily also pronounced member and romanized as romanized as a member is a pulpit in a mosque where the imam stands to deliver sermons have you, you guys heard of imam imam sahab they call in general uh, this one yes sir yeah in hindu we have pandits and muslims exactly. muslims yes they they say priest. Priest. maybe they teach they preach okay i am not sure exactly i have never been to one of this so maybe they preach or they you know read quran maybe they teach like pandits as you said in hindu in this one or priest in uh, christian okay so that is where they stand to deliver the sermons what is sermon gatherings hmm gatherings actually it's a kind of speech like mm-hmm. thing speech i can say prayers yes speech speech uh, speech Um, religious and uh, apparently moral obviously religion may be right moral no sermons no no wait i'll show you it is a part of service i mean in here what is a pulpit like stand ma'am mm-hmm. raised platform yes okay i'll show you guys in a minute when the battle of you know how to get yes apparently it's always a stair why oh, didn't notice i thought this is just our exactly this one only okay a pulpit generally it is in western church architect architecture okay and that time they don't have steps mosque apparently they always have and pulpit ka version in mosques is minbar okay understood yes ma'am okay, if anybody has Uh, one more, I'll just say one more. Okay, minbar is a part is a minbar is a pulpit where uh, imam, okay, uh, who is a leader of prayers, he stands to deliver the sermons. Sermons means a speech on religious or moral topics. Okay, this happens in actually Hindu uh, temples also, uh, Christian uh, churches also. is just another version the pulpit is english name of minbar okay that is where the imam stands it's usually a stair apparently i just saw for the general for mosque it is always a stair 
this is a grand version of it sometimes it's just a wooden chair also but it is always a stair okay any doubt now it means they use the staircase as in case of their dice yes they stand here apparently okay on the top floor yes sometimes it is just Okay, like this. So here the mic is there, and here ima, the imam stand to deliver the speech. Okay. Next, Reva. Here in the architecture plan, you saw here. Reva, Reva. Okay. What is Reva? It is not nothing fancy actually. Reva is a Turkish name for a portico. Okay. Now, what is a portico? Colorated walkway. Hmm. Okay. Entrance of building. No, not entrance of a building. It is a porch. Okay. Most usually covered by columns. Okay. Not covered as in uh, front will be always column, meaning it looks like it is open from the front. Mostly it is. Yes. Um, in churches. Not churches, sorry. In mosques and all, they have uh, this one. It's not a room. It's a porch which leads to the entrance. Not a room. Okay. See the name given to the venue, which is based on the building in which. Um, it is open to the front. Okay. And covered in, covered with pillars. While the porticos in Turkish architecture are used for aesthetic purposes at the entrance of the mosque, it also ensures that prayers are preserved from the rain, sun, uh, or snow. It's a walkway. Yeah, you can see like that also. This is the portico in uh, the blue mosque. Okay, as you can see, this is the forecourt. This is the fountain. Uh, this one. This is the portico. Okay, it is covered by uh, covered on the top, but it is open at the front. It's a yeah. You can say it's a walkway. Or we can say it is Muslim mandapa. Like yesterday class, we had seen the true true. Although it is not attached ex exactly to the inner part, or not always. Yes, you can say loosely. No, this is uh, Islamic architecture and Ottoman architecture. You need Turkish architect. Okay. Ma'am, do they uh, ask us the, the way of architecture in it? In no, no. They may ask for very famous this one and only, I feel they'll ask only for Indian this one because we know more about that. No, I don't think they will. I'm just, I've just told you for information. Sir. Okay, since it is in Turkey, it is logically obviously Turkey. Turkish architecture will be there, even if not whole, at least the influence of it will be there. Okay. Uh, the interior part of it is something like this. Very huge. Obviously, it is big. If you can, even if from outside, if you see, you can get how big it is. Okay. 
it is looking blue like that deep blue because of the lighting i see okay Ma'am, the windows uh, there are colored glasses, no? Yes. Some of them are. Yes, some of them are. Okay, understood. Yes, ma'am. It has five main domes, six minarets. And uh, how many? Eight smaller domes. Okay. Oh, Twelve was it? Eight secondary domes. Okay, see. We'll see about the uh, few interior details, exterior details of this. This one. Okay. Don't buy heart it. Okay. It's a lot of information. There's no need to buy heart it. I'm just giving you info. See, it incorporates many Byzantine uh, elements of the neighboring Hagia Sophia because Hagia Sophia is an example for Byzantine uh, architecture. Okay. It's traditional Islamic architecture and is considered to be the last, last great mosque of the classical period. The architect, I'm just going to call him Mehmed Aga, synthesized the ideas of his master, aiming for over, overwhelming size, majesty, and splendor. Okay. The upper area is uh, decorated with approximately 20,000 hand painted glazed ceramic in 60 different tulip patterns. Tulip means flower pattern. Okay. The lower stories are illuminated by 200 stained, gla stained glass windows. Okay. The mosque is preceded by a forecourt with a large fountain and a special area for ablution. What is ablution? Can you guys um, have ever heard of it? In uh, I'm I'm not sure about this, but uh, I think all mosques have a place where you when you go inside you wash your hands and legs and face, then you go inside. Right? So ablution is the act of washing your face and legs before going for purity sake. Okay, I think this is there in Indian. Temples also not everywhere, but more uh, many old temples have this. Guru Dwaras have this. What what what? what? Guru Dwaras. Guru Dwaras, yes. Okay, this. Uh, at its lower level and at every pier, pier means the column that takes the weight from the The column that takes weight from the Yeah. It's like a, uh, yeah. It's a column used for support. The interior, we know this. More than 20,000 hand painted ceramic tiles. Okay. These are all just additional information. You can read it later. Not very important for your exam point of view. The upper levels of the interior are dominated by blue paint, hence the name. Okay, more than two, 200 stained glasses are there, okay, which allow natural light, okay, assisted by chandeliers today. Now, the most important element in the interior of the mosque is the mirror, which is made of finely carved and sculptured marble. Okay, it is surrounded by many windows. The adjacent walls are sheathed in ceramic type. Okay, the mirror is made from uh, sculptured marble, finely sculptured marble. And it is surrounded by many windows. Okay. Then to the right is the minbar, or to the right of the mirror. 
uh, yeah noon prayer on fridays uh, as i know muslims have special prayer on fridays and holy days the mosque has been designed so that, such that even when it is the uh, when it is at its most crowded meaning heavy uh, uh, amount of people are there even then everyone in the mosque can see and hear the imam okay As, uh, acoustically it is designed in such a okay the court is about as large as the mosque itself okay court means what the four court that we saw surrounded by the river called the portico okay it is as large as the mosque itself and it is surrounded by continuous vaulted arcade or the river it has ablution uh, facilities on both sides okay meaning you can wash your hands and legs both side and then enter the mosque the central hexagonal fountain the fountain that is there it is hexagonal is small compared to the court okay the gateway is narrow but it is very huge hence monumental okay stands out architecturally from the arc meaning it is very visible its semi dome has a fine stalactite structure what is the meaning of stalactite have you heard of it no ma'am not heard okay stalactite and st stalagmite is you know, there are two different uh, i can say formations okay it is a mineral formation okay when uh, if you have seen in some of the caves okay mineral water drips okay and it makes very interesting shapes actually in this it looks very good actually ma'am is it a salt formation in the cave stalactite yeah you can say it's a formation i don't know if it's salt or other minerals or also there okay but yeah or uh, i have studied in uh, 8th or 9th mm -hmm. it's a uh, salt formation in cave mm -hmm. and uh, stalactite is a salt formation which comes uh, from the ground Okay, okay. And so this is stalactite uh, formation. Uh, if you can see the image, okay, it's the mineral water it drips down. After more one point of time, it becomes so it's solid solidifies. Okay, stalagmite. Yes, uh, stalactite rises from the roof. Stalagmite, the other formation, rock formation, it uh, comes from the floor. Okay. so whatever this um, this is there it most of the times i've seen it is very shiny okay yeah, that uh, they have used in this cave i'm saying mosque okay semi dome has a fine stalactite structure crowned by a small brick do this is addition okay any doubt no ma'am okay when i'll put this in the app there are i think 3 uh, to 4 three four yeah 3 to 4 uh, temple church temple slash church slash mosque architecture plans okay memory images are there then uh, principles of design are there about 30 of them okay this is actually a huge chunk of your drawing part i guess in short let's uh, come to the principles of design the main ones okay the principles of design are uh, minarets domes are important but main part is the minbar and uh, as they have also mentioned it's the most important river is a architectural feature courtyard 
though most of the mosques have it, especially international mosques, it is one of the important ones, not the most important. Mira also. Mira, Mimbar. Well, that, those are the uh, main intention of building any temple, mosque, or uh, church. It's for the prayers. So, where the prayer takes place, that is the most important. In this part. Okay. okay. Principles of design are the rules of a designer that a designer must follow to create an effective and attractive composition. Okay. These are some of the rules. It does not mean they use it. They use all of them always. Okay. Certain uh, requirements for making a design, say a poster or something. Okay. It requires certain principles of design. Okay. A composition or a photograph, illustration. All right. Okay. So the most the fundamental principles of design are emphasis, balance and alignment. Contrast, repetition, proportion, movement, and space. Okay. Emphasis is where uh, you attract the view of the you know, viewer's attention comes on one point which you want. Okay. Suppose uh, with the plants. Okay, I. Every day that we upload a document, it uh, since we are discussing one uh, plan anyway, okay, it has that uh, making PDF of all famous buildings because just architecture plan and the explanation won't cut it. So uh, that would become a huge document. I don't think you guys want to do that. You know, read it continuously. So do this way only. Okay? Every doc uh, document that we have uploaded since what two three we two weeks now, not three, two two weeks. It has one architecture. Study them one by one. Yes, type of house, I will send. Just plans and not definitions will, will not be of any use. You won't understand what it is. And mosque, this one was easy, so you understood pretty well. Without a definition, you won't understand anything. It's useless. Okay. Okay, uh, emphasis is, as I said, suppose you're making a poster for uh, a restaurant, okay? The, the restaurant is established and you want, they have given you offer. Your, the offer, what is there, suppose 50% offer, something like that, that should be on the uh, forefront. That should be your emphasis. Okay? Their emphasis is needed. It's like that. Balance is the distribution of the visual weights of objects or elements in general. Okay, uh, which will make the design stable. Okay, it may not be always equal, but it should look stable. You can understand it when you see it. Okay, there are different types of balances. You can see that. Easily. Alignment refers to placing text and other design elements on a page so they line up. Okay, alignment is not may not always be used. Okay, in some of the informal uh, design, may not always be used, but it is a uh, important part, important principle. Okay. Contrast. There's a context of visual design which uh, shows the difference between two or more elements in a composition. Okay. It can be shown, the difference can be shown by the color of it okay. or the contrast of color. Again, contrast doesn't always just mean black and white. It can be other colors also, but different contrast of color. Repetition, where one or many elements are repeated again and again to form a de to form a design. Okay. It uh, some uh, it brings a clear sense of unity, consistency, and cohesiveness. Again, not always used. Repetition can be regular or irregular. Okay, even or uneven. Proportion. which shows the relative size between two components or same component in this case. Okay. 
it can be shown using the dimensions relations between the height width and depth okay it also describes how the size of different parts of a piece of art design related relate to each other there may be two different uh, two or more different parts and using size a proportion uh, principle of design you can show the uh, difference between them or the relation it's a complex uh, okay this piece so man is my ha uh in making those logos we use proportion like like which part should be highlighted which shouldn't and uh, no the space occupied by that particular area the mm -hmm. so that the should look similar yes we... uh logos from what i have seen they go for symmetry that is like the most important part one of the most important part okay emphasis uh, have you any seen any logo which has emphasis because logo itself is so small if you can give me examples i'll uh, see it i uh, just don't see it right now hmm? is there any logo that you can think of that focus so one thing within the logo yeah, i'll just check i'll just say look for the logo the, most of the time what i've seen logos uh, focus on symmetry and less use of different colors so more movement okay. so movement is the path the viewer's eye takes through the uh, work of art often to focal areas okay focal areas not just one area such movement can be directed along lines edges shapes and color within the work of art okay? using this principle the artist can create the path our eye will travel as we look at one particular art okay white space is the uh white space is the area between design elements okay. it is also the space within individual design elements it does not always need to be white it's just an area okay. it's also called as negative space part b also i don't understand what is part b mean the this part part uh, image of... image questions yes okay uh, what paper did you guys try uh, this time i mean there were no questions like this ma'am there were questions but uh, look like that Where that were in exams, like part B is separated. Acha. Okay. Okay. Gradation. Gradation is a visual technique. Most of people who have built the temples, or, uh, temples, churches, or mosques, they won't ask names of architects because they are old. Okay, as such, no, I have not seen many of the people, uh, person for asking for temple architect. More modern, like Taj Mahal, suppose. Who is the architect of Taj Mahal? Ahmed Lori. Yes, Ustad Ahmed Lahore. Those and all, they may ask because they are more recent huh? temples and some of the temples, mosque, for example, the one we saw in uh, the Blue Mosque one, they are very old. Okay. Yes, we have discussed this. I'm just going through it very quickly because we have some others. Then we'll go for the question. Okay. Gradation is a technique where uh, the color hue. okay transitions from one form to one shade to another okay this is an example for gradation this also is an example for gradation color if you see dark to light 
This is the texture. Okay. Usually in architecture you see this, okay. but in drawing also you can see that. Okay. Texture can be drawn, drawn on 2D space. foreground and background okay the area of the picture space nearest to the viewer this tree for example is considered the foreground immediately behind the picture plane okay this is the picture plane immediately behind it mean your nearest part is called the foreground okay uh, an understanding of perspective okay allowed painters Okay, what we are doing concentrate on that. We'll discuss the temples and all later. Okay. During the class, uh, during when we are doing the temple architecture, mosque architecture, ask during that. We are doing principles of design now. Let's concentrate. Okay. An understanding of perspective allowed painters to divide space beh behind the picture into foreground, middle ground, and background. Okay. Organic. Uh, organic shapes are irregular and imperfect, meaning they're not geometrical. Naturally, these shapes will all be slightly different from one another. They're often curved and flowing, can seem unpredictable. Using organic shapes can make a piece of art or design seem more natural and real. Okay, this is an example for organic uh, design. Okay. Ma'am, uh, can we say organic has movement also? Yes, uh, any uh, visual, any element can have movement with the uh, use of lines, shades, as this has. Okay, not always an organic shape has movement. Okay, this one does. Okay, it seems to be flowing. Okay. For example, if I draw an amoeba on a uh, white paper, amoeba shape is an organic shape. It's a, it's irregular and imperfect. That is an organic art. Okay. A dynamic movement is uh, a type of movement, so is static. Okay? Dynamic movement is characterized by the movement of the eye that flows smoothly from one area of the comp composition to another. Okay? Dynamic movement is characterized by open shapes or shapes that closely relate to adjacent shapes. Okay? This you can see, I, um, you can see this, looks like it is moving. Okay? It's called a dynamic shape. Now here, bubble me if you see this. There's a boat, okay, but there's no sense of movement. It's a static. It's like frozen in uh, time. Okay, he's what uh, putting that net, but it is frozen. It is not showing a movement as such. When you are watching the image, static. Shape. Grouping. Grouping is the art of arranging objects in a pleasing manner, as you can see the image. A row or a mere collection of objects is not a group in pictorial composition. Okay, they're saying the whatever images are there, whatever shapes are there, okay, they have to be arranged in a pleasing manner. There is a possibility that you take all same images but arrange them in haphazard manner. That is not a group, a proper group. Okay, it is not just a collection. Okay, it should be in a pleasing manner aesthetically. Opacity. Opacity is the term most commonly used to describe the ability of paint to obliterate the color difference of a substrate. Okay. This there's a black strip here. Okay. Uh, a color is there. Okay, yellow oxide color. When they paint over it, black doesn't appear here. Okay, that is opacity of yellow oxide. Transparency, it is simply the quality of the paint or to being able to see through or at least partially see through one or more layers in an artwork. Okay. Sometimes they de deliberately use this. Like texture, transparency can be real or can be implied or suggested. Transparency, uh, suppose in a painting, okay, there's a girl. 
so uh, suppose in a painting there is a stage and there is a curtain okay the curtain is translucent or transparent behind them you can see a girl who's preparing for a dance or boy who is trying to shoot that is a implied transparency okay color transparency there is one more example i think that's a very good example it's a culture This is a sculpture of a woman whose face is covered by a uh, transparent cloth. It's a sculpture, remember? Okay. This is implied transparency. Okay. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Next. Closure. The principle of closure states that when you look at a complex arrangement of visual elements, okay, whenever you're thinking visual elements or elements, just think of things. Take a circle, a square, whatever you want. We tend to look for a single recognizable pattern. Okay? Sometimes what happens, uh, suppose the image is complicated, okay, not very clear in its lines. Okay, that time our all eye, human eye, always looks for a pattern everywhere. Okay. So, when you see an image that has missing parts, your brain will fill in the blanks and make a complete image so you can still recognize the pattern. Okay? this uh, which is there the lines between okay what does it look like the shape inside the shape hexagon it's a cube yes it's a cube yes it's a cube the lines though they are not very clearly given but it, you see the pattern because your eye automatically searches for it. okay Just a Next, common fit. Okay. The Gestalt law of common fit states that. What is Gestalt law? Uh, they are a set of classical uh, class, classic principles okay, of visual perception. This is common fit is one of them. Okay, closure is another one. Continuity, symmetry, order, those are some of Gestalt uh, principles. So, uh, Gestalt law of Common page states that humans perceive visual elements that move in the same speed or direction appear to belong together or are perceived as a single unit. Okay, meaning there are a flock of birds which you see flying on the, in the sky. Okay, they're all flying at, at the same speed or and direction. They look like a single unit. They are not, 
but they look like a single unit. This is the uh, law of common fit. Most common example is of flock of birds flying or uh, a group of planes, I'm not planes, jets, I think. Army jets, no? I'll show you guys the Google image. Okay. You'll understand better. Ma'am, hmm? do we use like perspective thing in the common fit? First, the, okay, the drawing part you're asking. No, not only ah. that. Uh, group of group of fishes, same thing, common thing. Okay, move towards. They all move. They all are moving towards one common point. So they appear to be a single unit. They, they are not, but our eye sees it as a single unit. Okay. Continuity. The principle of continuity states that elements that are arranged on a line or a curve are perceived to be more related than elements not in the line or okay? For example, this one. They are arranged in one curve. Okay. Color also plays an important part here. So they appear to be a group. Okay. Here, this also appear to be a group, though, though not in the same as this one. Okay? In the image given above, the top branch is seen uh, as continuing the first segment of the line, this segment of line. Okay, this allows us to see things as flowing smoothly without breaking lines into multiple parts. This looks like a part. Understanding what I'm meaning to say? Nice. Yes, I'm understood. Next, common region. The principle of common region says that items within a boundary are perceived as a group okay, and assumed to share. Some, some common characteristic of functionality. Okay? For example, you can see here, okay, the image itself, uh, when you see that this is a group, you feel that this is a part of, this is one group and this is another group. Okay? The elements may be different in it, okay? but it feels like they all share a common characteristic, some common characteristic. Okay? Now, whenever we are studying this elements of design, principles of design, okay, keep in mind that it is not very technical, okay. It is all about perception. Most of the time, it is all about perception, okay. What I am seeing, you may not see. This is a common thing. It's art is very unpredictable, as you guys know, okay. So don't take tension. You don't get it in first go. Okay, just keep your mind open. It will come to you. Repose. It's a state of rest, sleep, or tranquility. Tranquility. That harmony or moderation which affords rest for the eye. Okay. This is the general meaning of repose. Okay. The artistic meaning is uh, harmony in an image which shows us rest meaning it is it looks tranquil okay
this image okay it shows the calmness tranquility a uh, uh, sense of rest okay this is an example for repose understood yes ma'am okay uh, we were discussing one example yesterday this is the one okay so what they have done is what they have done is they have given you an image and they have given a few terms okay you have to tell which of them which of the term describe the image okay so if you blur but i think we'll get the okay yesterday we were discussing hot and humid okay it cannot be hot and humid because humid is climate which is near water it means moisture the near desert to there is no moisture so not first one second rhythm can you see rhythm no no, no ma'am Okay. Yes, ma'am. It has rhythm because in the sand dunes, okay, the move it shows rhythm. It's not movement as such, but rhythm is there. It is what I'm seeing. Okay. Also, in these type of images, most of the times uh, there are more than four options which are correct. Okay, so pick the four strongest one you feel are will be absolutely correct. Okay. Next, third one, barren. Is it barren? Yes. Yes, it's barren. Okay, barren means when no, there is no vegetation without moisture containing thing. Yeah. And vegetation. Without, without vegetation. Yeah, without vegetation, uh, no moisture content. Barren. Distortion. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Distortion is there. Um, yes. Distortion means. What is distortion? Distortion means the image is purposely uh, changed. Remember, we saw fisheye uh, view. That is distortion. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Looking through a glass sphere is distortion. Where is distortion here? No, ma'am. No distortion. No distortion. There is no distortion. Contrast. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No. Color no. difference is there. But there is no contrast, you know, that much of a difference between them. So no contrast. Aerial. Aerial no. means uh, you you mm -hmm. either have to see whether it's an aerial shot or uh, any part of sky is there, a significant part. If this seems to be taken from uh, high above, na, image. Aerial, it's an aerial view. So it's true. Low land. Mm hmm. What is the meaning of low land first? No, ma'am. No, no. What is a low land? Flat ground. Yeah, flat ground, which is uh, 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 at sea level, not above below. So this is not a desert. Sorry, this is not a low land. Next, gradation. Mm -hmm. Is there gradation? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. You can see. Uh, some part of it is bright, so sun shadow. Some part of it is a darker shade. So gradation is there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hot and arid. Arid means what? Without air. Dry. Dry climate. Dry air. Dry. 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 Correct. Dry. So hot and arid, it seems to be. Yes. Evergreen. Not oh. possible. No. No. Yes, not possible. Marshy. What is marshy? It marshy. is like a wet thing. Yeah, yeah. Wet thing. Land. Uh, which fungus land quality is wet. Yeah. It's a wet land. Okay. So it's not. So we saw second rhythm is there. Third barren. Next uh, aerial six one. Gradation is there. Hot and arid. That's it. Okay, understood. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, what are the four of them which are the most, you know, important? 
okay for sure i can say it is barren it is aerial hot and arid and gradish four pakka they are there rhythm sometimes you know it may be different to the perceiver but these four except for the third one 2 6 8 and 9 they are for sure okay नेक्स्ट again same question four terms you have to describe okay uh first is bright and fair does it look bright and fair yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am ah, it looks bright and fair there some clouds yes the rhythm no ma'am not exactly okay uh what is one form of achieving rhythm रेपिटेशन रेपिटेशन इज देर आई एम नॉट से ऑलवेज देर बीट इज रिदम अकॉर्डिंग टू आर्ट एंड सेंस ऑफ मूवमेंट या समथिंग गोज कंटिन्यूअसली इन वन डिरेक्शन Hmm. Uh, I'll write the official definition. Okay, then maybe you'll understand looking at the image and the. Ma'am, but the flowers are randomly arranged, so we cannot say it's in the rhythm. Yeah, uh, randomly arranged, but uh, then uh, we have never said that repetition should be an organized way, right? Okay. It can be even or uneven. Hmm, it can be even or uneven. one of the definitions i just you know and we putting it there it uh, helps guide the viewers i around the work of art okay it is not always movement yes so uh, at least i feel rhythm is there is it barren no no ma'am no for the no. repetition is there yes, yes ma'am yeah Yes, there is repetition. Uh, contrast? No, no. So yes, ma'am. There is a contrast. Contrast is there? Yes, no, ma'am. Ma no, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. The uh, contrast is when uh, you show the difference between two things, not within the same thing. So the there is color difference between the. Petals and uh, this one, but it is within the same thing. It's not showing the difference between two things. Yes, okay. yes ma'am. Symmetry? No, ma'am. No, no. There is no symmetry. Is it any type of symmetry? Is it blurred? Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay, the yes, image is blurred. I know, but it is not actually. I found it from uh, some place, so it is not clear. Not actually blurred. Okay. Okay. So we have to look it for overall image, not for just one part of it. Hmm. Is there gradation? No. Gradation. If the flowers in the background were dark, suppose, or flowers in the foreground were dark, then it would be gradation. But no, it's not. There is no gradation. Scale. Yeah. Scale. Yes, ma'am. Yes. 
yes scale is there you know, can see the difference uh, between the nearest flowers and the farther ones go on shape goes on change size goes on change balance no no as such no even i don't see balance much here yeah we go is it marsh uh, sorry balance not is it marshy no ma it is i guess no marshy is what wetland na no? doesn't look like at least in the image it not it's not marsh maybe in the bottom forms okay so no, but practically it's first, marshy right yeah but in the image whether it is showing no. marshland no no it is not if they had given shown the whole plant image from root to top and it was showing wetland then we could say marsh so first okay. one second one fourth uh Oh no, sorry. It's blur is there, no? I don't see. Correct. Blur in the background. True. My mistake. I yeah. Observe it. Blur is there. Correct. Yeah. I just saw because the overall image is look looking not very sharp. So concentrate on that. Blur is there. Scale also is there. Then what is scale and balance thing? Oh, Were you not there for last classes? This is my second class. Acha, okay, we did it in the last, third last, I think. Okay. Yeah, I will uh, discuss that again. Okay. I hope you guys understood at least part of it. Is the image balanced? Does it look, does it look balanced? Not sure. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No. No, ma I'll check once more. Now I'm starting to see. I'm starting to see a little balance. It is half of it. You can see not everywhere. Asymmetrical balance can be there. If I draw a line, if I draw a line in the center, okay, can I see asymmetrical balance? Yes, ma'am. Well, some part of it. I study it again. Okay, I'm not sure about balance. See it again. It looks like balance. I'll put it here anyway. Okay. So you can for sure put bright and fair, repetition, blur, and scale. Correct. Ma'am, you can explain once again gradation. Sure. Gradation is the change uh, in uh, color hue. Okay, same color hue. Um, uh, I can say lightens. Okay. general general it lightens the shade of the color goes on lightening or goes on darkening that is called gradient okay so okay, can you say about marshy ones again marshy means wetland okay okay ma'am one is there i can see for sure four is correct it's blurred my mistake Nine. Okay. For sure, these four I can put. Correct. I hope you guys can see it too. Yes. Understood. Yes. Okay, it's mine. Okay. Uh, someone asked about uh, balance and. Yes, ma'am. Balance and scale. Scale. Okay. I'll just explain them quickly. Then we can end the session. Okay. See, balance is the distribution of visual weights of objects. Here there are two triangles. Okay, the if I draw a line here, it looks perfectly balanced because this shape and this shape, they are same. Color is same. Weight looks same. Weight of the objects. Okay, uh, it makes the uh, this one 
design stable okay uh, if you want a design to look stable it should be balanced there are four types of balances okay the, the one which we saw is called the symmetric pull balance meaning every which way you see it is perfectly balanced every which way you like, draw an axis like pyramid lama uh, sure if there are two pyramids same pyramids for in this case then it is a balanced pyramid. okay so four types are symmetrical asymmetrical radial and crystallographic or mosaic bag ma'am mirror image is balanced yeah mirror image is definitely symmetrical balance both are there in the same image symmetrical balance is achieved by giving equal weight of to the elements okay across the center point of the composite now for example you see this okay if i draw the axis here it is perfectly balanced on both sides equally balanced okay that is a symmetrical balance no other difference can be seen okay you can see the, the result is a repetitive or mirrored image okay that appears completely Not vertically balanced. or horizontally any or any way center point can be anything okay, okay. usually traditionally they, uh, the axis is vertical image is you know both sides left and right Okay. because that is how we see image that's from asymmetrical balance asymmetrical balance occurs when the elements on a layout are different but by being equally weighted still feel balanced okay. now equally weighted i can't uh, how do i put this visual weight is uh, the visual force because of the contrast of light okay there may be two elements with similar weight but different shapes or one larger one heavier elements okay uh, for in example in this case the positioning of the elements is different but weight seems almost equal okay it's called that's why it's called a asymmetrical one. compared to symmetry asymmetrical balance can produce images with varying level of attractiveness symmetrical if you can use it it's a very safe bet in design i'm saying architecture also okay but it is predictable asymmetrical balance shows uh, interesting images radial is see water ripples the inside of shells okay they all have a hypnotic calming quality these type of images use radial balance to draw the eye towards the central focal point okay for example this one okay your eye immediately draws to the central focal point it is radiating uh, balance okay the radial balance for example spiral also it's a radial balance next up crystallographic balance or mosaic okay mosaic means what different uh, type tiles arranged so it is achieved by giving equal weight to a large number of elements they are formed by smaller elements okay they may not this may not always be a symmetrical pattern but it looks balanced okay organized chaos they call it because see because there are many images your eye doesn't fall on one particular thing okay so that's why it looks balanced okay understood Okay. Yes, ma'am. Got it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then we can uh, conclude the session. We'll do few more examples of this kind. Elements of design. Don't worry. Scale, ma'am. Hmm. Scale. Scale. Oh, right. Right. Thank you. I I don't think I've done. Oh, we have not done it till now. No way. Next class I'll put that and we'll discuss it in detail because I've not put it up currently. Proportion is there, not scale there. Okay. Yes. So we are finished with the session for now. Correct, sir.
Yeah, Pooja, I'm audible to you. Yes, sir, you are. Uh, we are finished with the session. Okay.